Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Phil the Conquista Dork. You may have noticed that I've started reviewing some movies on my channel. Obviously, I'm still reviewing video games. That is my general bailiwick. But I thought to myself it might be fun to try and combine the two. And I have been thinking of dabbling in the devil's dishwater by doing some top 10 and top 5 lists here on my channel. So today, I bring to you the top five best games based on movies. This could be based on a film directly, or it could be based on a film franchise. I'm gonna try and stick to the rule that we're only gonna do one game per franchise here, so I'm not gonna go through uh, the whole catalog of Star Wars games, for example. I'm gonna stick to one, but there's one in there. And if you've been paying attention, you know. So let's start from the beginning, or from the end, depending on how you look at it. Number five. Thank you. GoldenEye. GoldenEye came out in 1997 for the N64. It was developed by Rare Games, and to be completely frank, that's actually one of the best developers it could have come out of because Rare Games developed some of the rarest games of all, and those are great reasons to own an N64. And GoldenEye was no different. The campaign was a hell of a lot of fun. You're following Pierce Brosnan's damsel banging spy all the way to one of Ned Stark's earliest deaths. Oh, buddy. You had no idea all the memes we'd make out of you. The campaign was indeed a lot of fun, but that's not what you came for. You came for the multiplayer, the couch co-op, being able to sit down with your friends and load up on some fast action, bragging rights, and the knowledge that anyone, anyone who chooses odd job was not to be trusted in the real world. Seriously, dude, fuck yourself. Don't, don't, don't be that guy. Now, the fact of the matter is, is that GoldenEye is remembered incredibly fondly. In fact, for a lot of people, when it comes to their lists uh, along these same lines, it tends to be near the top. So why so low on this list for me? Well, it's probably because I've played GoldenEye recently, and a lot of people haven't, and they always want to know, how does it hold up? How does it hold up? The answer, of course, is not great. Seriously, it, it just doesn't feel as good as it used to, and especially if you're used to playing twin-stick games and games where you're looking with one stick and moving with the other and everything like that. Everything being on a single plane is... is it's, it's not the same. It doesn't feel as fun anymore. It's a little clunky, but goddamn if it wasn't important. It was very influential. We wouldn't have most of the first-person shooters that we have today if it weren't for GoldenEye. So good on you, GoldenEye. You're going right here on this motherfucking list. Thank you. Ghostbusters. Now, I'm talking about Ghostbusters, the video game that came out in 2009 for the PC, PS3, and Xbox 360. This was a very, very important game that I don't really think got its due. When it came out, it got fine reviews, sevens and eights and that sort of thing. People seemed to enjoy it. But the fact of the matter is that the more time we put between its release and our own nostalgic memories of this game, I think we lose something here. We seem to have forgotten how good this game was. First off, it was written by, among other people, Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, and included the voice acting of Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, Ernie Hudson, and the legendary Bill Murray. The game's a third-person shooter, and you play as the quote-unquote rookie, the new guy who has to accompany them on all kinds of weird adventures in New York. It takes place two years after the second Ghostbusters movie, so they're still young and in their prime and everything like that, and it's a lot of fun, and the quipping and the dialogue is hilarious. Frankly, I think it's actually one of the funniest games that has been made in recent years, and I don't think it gets enough credit for that. And the game takes story elements from the first two movies, so it has kind of this 
blissful, nostalgic feel to it. You really enjoy yourself. You really you feel like you're a part of the universe. And I think that when the most recent Ghostbusters movie came out and everyone was getting all upset, this was the game that I kept wanting to say, you don't have to worry about it. We have already got a Ghostbusters 3. It's Ghostbusters the video game. It's so damn good. Even if you don't play video games, go on YouTube, watch someone play through it. There's enough dialogue and action and cinematics that it is fun and funny, whether you're playing the damn thing or you're just observing. Ghostbusters the video game, my fourth favorite game based on a film. Holy shit, is it good. The Thing. The Thing came out in 2002 for PC, Xbox, and PlayStation 2. It was a direct sequel to the original John Carpenter's The Thing that came out in the 80s. And paying homage to that very, very graphic, stressful, and beautiful science fiction film, they did it all just right. This game is graphic, it's horrifying, it has a paranoia meter, it has a meter for freezing to death. There are so many ways to die in the thing. But let's face facts, it'll probably be a horrifying alien thing. So this game did pretty well, it did middling reviews. The thing that people kept getting on its case about was that the paranoia meter, if you want to call it the paranoia meter was not as up to snuff as it could have been. And I can't help but agree to a certain extent. It's been a while since I played this game, but the fact of the matter is, is that I remember it as being a really competent action horror game with some extras that it would have been so much better if they could have done them right. So why is it this high up on the list if I'm already talking about the things that they could have done better? Well, ambition for one thing. They had a lot of ambition. They worked their asses off on making this as solid of a game as it could be. Secondly, it serves as a really good sequel to The Thing. Some people might remember that there was actually a Thing prequel that came out recently, and it was hot garbage. I'm just really, really glad that they didn't try to make it a direct sequel, and therefore we'd have to argue over whether or not The Thing from 2002 is canon or not. Uh, I'm not even entirely sure if that's a, th a thing that they're dealing with, but it doesn't matter because in my mind, I can remember them giving it this wonderful, terrifying little sequel. And that's why The Thing ends up at number three. I, I, you can't find it on Steam or GOG. I, I, I gotta look for it. I know I own it on Xbox. I'm gonna have to dig up my old Xbox and play the fuck out of this thing. Go find it. You can get it for like eight bucks. I bet you could find it for five on eBay. Find this game, pop it into your PS2 or your Xbox or what have you, and, you, and just, just try this one out. It is so good. And just like the Ghostbusters game that I mentioned before, I don't think that it quite got the recognition that it fully deserves. So uh, that's enough of me sucking the thing's dick. Onwards! Thank you. Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, I'm guessing a lot of you saw this one coming. Not only is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic my favorite Star Wars game, it is absolutely, in my opinion, probably one of the best RPGs ever made. It was my introduction to Bioware, actually knowing who Bioware was as a developer, and it came out in 2003 for Xbox and for PC. Later on, they actually got it so that you can play it on your goddamn iPad if you want to, which um, I've done, yes, thank you for asking. So. This is one of those fantastic storyline games combined with some really great gameplay, combined with some twists, some beautiful scenery, and all the extra goodies that a Star Wars fan could want. Basically, you play this young, unknown recruit who is sent out to go save Bastila Shan, who is supposed to be one of the great Jedi of that particular generation, this generation being thousands upon thousands of years before the events of Episode One. 
this game has you looking for her and then finding out your own potential because of course a video game isn't going to be surrounding you as second banana of course you end up being the badass that everything rests on the shoulders of and as you fight against these evil sith lords like dark malik you find out things about yourself and collect this huge party of people and get to know them and go into their little adventures and god Damn, it's fun. It's just so good, guys. Knights of the Old Republic 2 was also pretty good, if you ask me. A lot of people had a problem with how wordy it was, and... Yeah, yeah. That's completely fair, but that's also damn good. True story, I actually was thinking about doing Knights of the Old Republic as my most recent Let's Play instead of Amnesia, but the fact of the matter is, is I really wanted to get into a game that I hadn't already played a hundred thousand times, although, let's face facts, probably gonna play this one pretty soon. Thank you. Alien Isolation. Yeah, I know. Again, just like the Knights of the Old Republic, those of you who watched my Alien Covenant review recently are probably not going to be terribly surprised. Alien Isolation was my favorite game of 2014, and it stands out to me as the best game in the Alien franchise. Because instead of throwing you a pulse rifle and some mini nukes and setting you loose to kill thousands upon thousands of xenomorphs, it focuses in on the bone-chilling horror of the original Alien. Now, I loved Aliens, for example. I loved that one, and I like the action games that go around it, but I think one of the greatest disservices we've done to the Xenomorph as a monster is oversaturate, and I mean that in a big way. I mean that in putting way too many of them in your movie. Alien Isolation remembered how claustrophobic and frightening just you and a silent ship could be. I played this game, and literally the first hour or so, there's not even a, a, a sign that you're about to run into an alien, and I couldn't help myself. I still found myself hiding under desks, hiding in lockers, all that kind of stuff, which was good practice, because that is what you're going to be doing a lot of in Alien Isolation. You hide, you have to listen, you have to pay attention, and God, does it hold up. On an aesthetic level, it's really wonderful, because they took that weird, ah, retro-style science fiction look from the original Alien movie and very effectively used it. It's this odd 70s feeling future, if that makes any sense. You have to see it to understand what I mean. When you're playing through it, just like when you're watching Alien, there's this blue-collar sensibility to all the hyper-futuristic stuff that you're dealing with. Yes, you're in a spaceship, but you're still recording stuff on cassette discs. Everything has this kind of grungy, bare-bones, again, blue-collar kind of feel to it. It isn't slick and shiny and perfect and honed like other science fiction films are. Alien Isolation gets the flavor of Alien right, and it gets the fear right, and it's absolutely the best game based on a film. So that was my top five list of my favorite games based on film franchises. What did you think? Did I please you? Tell me in the comments below. Tell me everything you know. Tell me what games I missed. I know I missed some, and I know that you are fuming deep down inside. Give them to me. Tell me. Give me examples of why. Back up your answers. Work cited, motherfucker. That's how this works. Join me next time. We're going to do more of these lists. Let me know if there are other lists that you want me to do, any kind of games or genres that I should throw in my two cents, because, of course... Everyone needs to hear my opinion on everything. <laughs> so in the meantime, in between time, my name is Phil the Conquistador. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You know what to do right down there. Do that thing. And remember, please, tell your mother to call me. You're my goddamn son, too.
Hey, Patty, don't sink a little drinky. Daddy, get sad and blue. Sneak a little drinky, snickety do. Sneak a little drinky past you. Sneak a little drinky, snickety do. Sneak a little drinky past you.